Humans have always been fascinated with space exploration. The 20th century was marked by the first human in space, the first lunar landing, and the start of construction of the International Space Station. Mars represents the next major frontier in space exploration, and will certainly be a defining scientific achievement of the 21st century. Needless to say, there's a lot of factors outside of cultural and historical momentum that are pushing us forward towards Mars space exploration. The origin of life on Earth is a central question amongst scientific communities. As we gain more knowledge about life on our planet, it is natural to ask ourselves, what about life on other planets? Mars is an ideal candidate to pursue that line of questioning. Furthermore, studies and experiments conducted on Mars may provide a deeper understanding of biological, geological, and climate phenomena here on Earth. Additionally, a collective push for Mars-based exploration will generate scientific developments in a number of different sectors. The aerospace, agricultural, communication, and medical fields are just a few examples of where we will see the scientific boom. These novelties will be used on Earth long before they are implemented on Mars. Currently, Mars-based missions are primarily accomplished by robots. Although they have been crucial in answering scientific questions, the impact of a human's presence cannot be underestimated. Manned missions to Mars would allow for more tedious experiments, more complicated and immediate decisions, on-site repair of damaged infrastructures and instrumentation, as well as more physically demanding operations, such as subsurface drilling. In planning a manned mission to Mars, the next step to consider is the crew that will be embarking on the journey. In fact, there is a saying, the human factors three quarters of any expedition. This suggests that crew selection and training will be a substantial part of pre-mission logistics. In order to ensure a successful mission, crew compatibility will be prioritized. Although this factor is difficult to predict, long-duration simulations and interpersonal skill evaluations can be used to assess group cohesion. Additionally, crew composition will surely play a role in group compatibility. As of right now, all male, all female, and mixed crews are being explored. These gender ratios have been tested during Antarctic missions and appear to all have their advantages and disadvantages. Crew selection will be completed five years prior to the first Mars mission. Candidates will need to fulfill certain personal and medical requirements, as well as display social and behavior skills. Additionally, given the duration of these missions, applicants may need to undergo genetic screening and preventative surgeries to minimize the risk of medical emergencies. During these initial stages, professional engineers will be at the helm of a number of important decisions. Engineers will play a role in developing everything from the vehicles used to move around the Martian surface to the tools and systems required for mission experiments. Additionally, engineers will be central during the training stages. Their knowledge of the technology will be invaluable in educating the crew. Once the crew is selected and trained, the team will be ready for takeoff. Due to the nature of outer space and the fact that humans are not built to be in those conditions, the crew will face various physical and psychological challenges on their journey to the Red Planet. One of these challenges will be facing the galactic cosmic radiation. The levels of radiation largely depend on where we are in the solar activity cycle and the solar weather, but even in the best conditions, a trip to Mars will expose astronauts to more radiation than other space missions we have accomplished. This radiation exposure can cause a long list of side effects, including central nervous system disorders, chronic and degenerative risks to tissues, organ failure or malfunction, infertility, genetic mutations, damage to stem cells in the brain, cancer, and even death. This radiation can be minimized by choosing an optimal path to take to get to Mars, where the space travelers will be partially protected by the atmosphere. Radio protectors and active or passive shielding can also be applied to protect the astronauts. In addition to the radiation exposure, astronauts will also see changes to their skeletal, muscle, cardiovascular, neurovestibular, and immune systems due to various other environmental factors in space. The lack of gravity will cause changes in bone mineral composition, resulting in bone and muscle mass loss. Space travelers will begin to lose their ability to walk and stand with proper posture when they return to Earth. This may also cause a drop in their blood pressure and irregular heart rhythms. As for the psychological challenges that the space travelers will face, these will be caused by isolation and confinement that they will experience during their mission. For the duration of the trip, the astronauts will be separated from friends and family and will be living in a small space with a lack of privacy. This may cause interpersonal conflicts, unhealthy coping strategies, loneliness, and boredom. To combat this, it's important to have crew members trained in counseling and crisis intervention. 75 years later. Now, imagine that on a long enough time horizon, we, humans, found a way to explore Mars and to get there sustainably every single year. But now, multiple new questions come up. How do we make it actually livable for humans and make it our second Earth? How do we manage who owns the resources on the planet? And how will we manage the relationship between the peoples of Mars and of planet Earth? First, terraforming Mars. The process of altering its environment to make it habitable for humans is a topic that has been heavily debated for years. Some believe that it's possible, while others think it's an impossible feat. The process would involve altering the Martian environment, 
changing the planet's atmosphere and climate and making it suitable for humans to live in. But this raises a crucial question. What about the impact it would have on the Martian environment and microbial life? As Carl Sagan once said, Mars has life now and we have to be very careful not to compromise its survival. The planet's harsh conditions and thin atmosphere have allowed microbial life to survive. But the question is, can we preserve it while we try to make Mars habitable for humans? Now, looking even further into the future, a new interesting question comes up. A topic that has become a crucial issue in the recent years, which is the ownership of resources and colonies on Mars. Private companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin have announced their plans to send humans to Mars, but who will own the planet's resources? The Outer Space Treaty of 1967 outlines the principles of space law and prohibits any country from owning celestial bodies, but it does not mention private companies. This leaves a significant gap in the law, and we need to address it before the private companies occupy Mars for themselves. In conclusion, Mars is a planet of great fascination and intrigue, but with it comes a set of challenges that we must address responsibly. As engineers, our goal is to establish a proper way of settling on Mars, while keeping intact our ethics and objectives of respecting Mars' environment and favoring a stable human colonization of this magnificent red planet.